Does everybody know what time it is? Tool time. That's right. Vin for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> Welcome to Tool Time. I am Tim, the Tool Man Taylor, and you all know my assistant, Al Metalhead Borland. <laughs> Welcome to Metal Week, right here on Tool Time. That's right. This week we invite my old high school shop teacher along, the maestro of metal, the Sultan of Steel. Oh, good. Uh, the Earl of. <laughs> or aluminum. <laughs> Let's give him a warm welcome out here. Mr. Art Leonard, come on. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, you. Well, this is very exciting to have you on here, Mr. Leonard. There you go. What was your first reaction when I said you're coming back on tool time? Fear. <laughs> Don't worry, that'll go away. Once you're unconscious. Why don't we tell everybody the projects we'll be doing this week? Oh, sure, okay. Well, first I'll be showing you how to frame with steel and then how to put, install aluminum gutters, and then we'll talk about flashing on your roof. <laughs> Which is better than where usually it is out there in the street. <laughs> you remember when you used to make cracks like that in class? Yeah, yeah. You used to give me that shut up and wait in the hall look. <laughs> Is he looking at me right now? <laughs> okay, I'll stand up. Oh, come on, get back here. When I was in school, I never spoke until I was called on. Did I call on you? <laughs> no. Now, let's start with the gutters. Now, I've cut these pieces with an old-fashioned hacksaw. Right. Then we're going to attach the gutters to our fascia board using this bad boy. The Benford CO2-powered nail gun. Oh, yeah. This will shoot a thousand eight penny nails galvanized in an hour. I hold your horses. No, Mr. Bond, you hold your horses. <laughs> First, we have to pop rivet the joints. Now, the rivets will not be complete until they're absolutely. Ah! Ah! <laughs> you shot Mr. Leonard in the butt? This, this is exactly why you shouldn't play around with a nail gun. But just calm down, I'm training first aid. I'll need a claw hammer, a vacuum hose, some band-aids, and a magnet. upstairs reeks. She just wants to smell pretty for a date with Mr. Leonard. Grandma's going out on a date. Isn't she a little old for that? Brad, your social life doesn't end just because you're a senior citizen. I guess you'll find out in a couple years. <laughs> you do know that the oldest son has to feed and bathe his mother. <sighs> Gross. <laughs> The whole upstairs stinks. It's just your mother's perfume. Why do you women think that we want you to smell like flowers? What do you want us to smell like? Cigars. <laughs> to attract a man, spray a little essence of stogie. <laughs> hey, Mr. Leonard, come on in. Have a seat. <laughs> I only wish I could. Still a little tender in that area, huh? Oh, I got shot in the butt in Korea. It didn't hurt this much. So, I hear you've been seeing quite a lot of Lucille lately. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I went up last month and uh, we drove into Gaylord for her birthday. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Oh, Art. <laughs> hey, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> My 
Gosh, you're as pretty as a peach in a little red wagon. <laughs> How can you never say stuff like that to me? I didn't even understand it. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Have a good time. Bye. They are so adorable. Yeah, but didn't that kiss seem a little long to you? They were just saying hello. No, no, no. That was not a hello. That was hello. <laughs> Come on, Tim. You know they've been seeing each other. Yeah, but I mean, I thought they were seeing each other like old people see each other, you know? Eating dinner at 4.30. <laughs> Watching Matlock. They're old, Tim. They're not dead. <laughs> You're not suggesting that they... Uh... <laughs> they might be. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, just because they're older doesn't mean that they don't have the same urges we have. You know, this is an area I don't want to discuss, okay? Tim, you are an adult. I mean, you should be able to think of your mother as a sexual being. Oh. <laughs> oh. Why are you all dressed up? Because I'm taking Mom out to a real nice restaurant. What'd you do this time? <laughs> Nothing. Is that bad? You guys have no idea what it takes to make a good marriage. How could we? You don't just take your wife out to dinner after you screwed up. Sometimes you take her out before you screw up. That way you build up credit for stupid things you haven't done yet. So it's kind of like getting frequent screw-up miles. I like that. Tim, you're going out to dinner. Why are you eating right before you go? Jill, that's me. <laughs> Tim, how many times have I told you not to eat before we got to dinner? Mom lets me. Thanks for staying with the boys tonight, Lucille. Oh, happy to do it. We should be back around 10. Take your time. And be sure and mention Art's name at Sorrentino's. He really made an impression with the owner. Certainly seems to have made an impression on you. Oh, Jill. Oh, Lucille. <laughs> It's just a, Art has such a zest for life. He makes me happy in a way that I never thought I could be again. Well, I'm so glad for you. <laughs> you know, Mom, whatever you and Art are doing, which I don't want to know, <laughs> I'm happy. Well, I really appreciate that, Tim. You know, it's just too bad that you couldn't have dated him in high school. You would have got better grades. <laughs> Come to think of it, it would have been a good idea if you dated my math and English teachers. <laughs> Your math teacher was a woman. Well, if you really loved me, that wouldn't have made any difference, would it? <laughs> Lucille, we don't usually let our babysitters have their boyfriends over, but if you'd like to call Mr. Leonard, we'd make an exception. Oh, that's okay, honey. I think he needs to spend some time with his daughter. Besides, I don't want to monopolize all of Art's time. Tim, stop eating the crackers. I'm not. All right, then whistle. <laughs> When you are No, Taylor. Tim Taylor. <laughs> it's unbelievable how many guys think I'm this barn journal guy. An amazing coincidence. Ah, your table is ready. Antonio will be your waiter. Buongiorno. <laughs> Must be the guy's twin. <laughs> I'll be right back. I gotta go to the ladies' room. All right, wash your hands. <laughs> what? I thought I was with the boys. <laughs> don't bother. You don't need to wash your hands. <laughs> Sir, would you care to see our wine list? You bet I would. Perhaps I can interest you in the Brunello di Malticino. Is that the price for the bottle or for the vineyard? Perhaps you'd be interested in something a little more modest. Maybe with a twist off. In that case, may I offer you a soda? We have a root beer that's quite amusing. A waiter who's nut. Um, how about just two nice glasses of your house white? Very good.
Hey, Mr. Leonard. <laughs> Tim, what are you doing? Get out. <laughs> Why? Mr. Leonard's here with another woman. Well, it's probably his daughter. It would make him 195 years old. <laughs> his sister. They were kissing on the lips. Lots of families kiss on the lips. Yeah, the family's from Deliverance. <laughs> Tim, I don't think you should jump to any conclusions. You know what kind of man Mr. Leonard is. A dirty, rotten, Tim, Tim. Dirty rat! <laughs> Would you like your wine served in the blender? We were uh, just admiring the greenery. What are these called? Plants. <laughs> Might I tell you about the specials tonight? How can you think of food at a time like this? Perhaps because this is a restaurant? Could you just give us a few moments, please? Very good. This is so depressing. Yeah, tell me about it. I've looked up that man since I was a little kid. Said all those romantic things to Mom. What do you call her? The peach in a little red wagon. Probably calling her a kumquat little blue tractor. <laughs> Here they come. Uh, hi. Where? Uh, under the table. <laughs> to hear the specials. <laughs> is that before they got married, they love good weather. <laughs> you know, Grandma, maybe you ought to think about getting your ears checked. My hearing is just fine. How's your memory? <laughs> Tim, we have got to tell her. No, we're not going to tell her. Tomorrow in tool time, I'll talk to Mr. Leonard, tool man and tool man, okay? We're just gonna go in there and pretend nothing happened? That's how we do it, my family. She still doesn't know through the summer of love I hitchhiked to Indy. Or that you and I lived together before we were married. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi. How'd you like the restaurant? Oh, that was great. You know, I didn't expect you home so early. Maybe I'll just go over to Arts and surprise him. Well, that would surprise him, but you don't want to do that. Why? You think he's in bed? I'd bet on it. 9.30 on a Saturday night? I'm sure he's still up. Mom, Mom, you can't go. Why not? Because, gosh darn it, I miss you. You should go see Art tomorrow. Okay, I guess that can be done. Great. Let's have some coffee. We'll talk about all the things we haven't talked about. Okay. Why not start with how you two lived together before you got married? Hey, you handle that. I'll make the coffee. <laughs> It's going to be great having you on the show, Wilson. You know, your sculptures are incredible. Well, thank you, Al. Ever since I was a young lad, it was always a dream of mine to create metal headwear. <laughs> well, ever since I started working with Tim, it's been a dream of mine to wear metal headwear. You know, I have to confess, I am feeling a wee bit of stage fright. A little nervous, are you? Well, I'm fearing I'm about to experience reverse peristalsis. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm about to blow chowder. <laughs> Where's Mr. Leonard? He, he called to say he's running a little late. Oh, I bet he's running late. Are you picking up babes out of the Social Security office? 
I thought Mr. Leonard was dating your mother. That's what I thought. Last night I saw him kissing some other woman at a restaurant. Mm. Well, it seems to me that Mr. Leonard probably has a problem with monogamy. I don't care what kind of wood he uses. <laughs> this guy's a robot. I looked up to this guy. Well, Tim, I'm reminded of what the English essayist Samuel Johnson said about teachers of morality. Oftentimes, they discourse like angels, but more often, they live like men. Well, the problem is my mom's never been happier. You guys, we're on in three minutes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Tim, stand away from Wilson. Why? <laughs> Don't ask. Well, now that we've finished showing you Wilson's metal sculptures... I'm Spartacus. No, I'm Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Ask anybody. I'm... No, I'm Spartacus. Okay, you Spartacus. You go ahead with that Spartacus stuff. Get whipped. <laughs> Spartacus and I will be right back after these messages with Tim's high school shop teacher, Mr. Leonard. He's going to show us how to customize a mailbox, so stay tuned. All right, let's hurry up. Be Move careful up. with this. Hey, Timmy, I, 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 I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah, thanks for showing up halfway through the show. I was getting the stitches removed from my butt. Doctor says hello. He recognized your handiwork. <laughs> Well, we're back with Mr. Leonard, who's going to show us his hobby. At least one of them. <laughs> uh, oh, well, now, this is a very beautiful mailbox. Mm -hmm. How would you go about making one of these? Oh, easy. Just take a sheet of your 24-gauge half-hard aluminum and bang it out against a sheet metal anvil. Oh, you have a lot of hammers to choose from. This here is a ball peen. This is a bumping hammer. Which one would you prefer, Mr. Leonard? Well, actually, Al, I like to use both of them. So one hammer's not good enough for you. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Each, each hammer gives you something different. Well, you know, there's a lot of good, solid folks out there that think you should pick one hammer and stick with that. Well, I think they're crazy. I even use a riveting hammer. Sometimes I use a rubber mallet. You'll just hammer with anything, won't you? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about a guy I thought I knew. Not a guy that goes and picks up tools in restaurants and makes out with them. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, okay. Well, I think it's time for another break. We'll be right back after these messages from Binford. <laughs> Tim, what is the matter? Yeah, what's going on? I got a little bone to pick with Mr. Leonard. Well, fine, let's hear it. We have an audience. Pick your bones backstage. <laughs> All right, what's your problem with me, kid? I saw you at Sarantino's last night with another woman. Oh, boy. Yeah, I saw everything. The flowers, the kiss. I'll be honest with you, Tim. I am dating another woman besides oh. your mother. Her name is Florence. How can you do this to Mom? She told me you made her happy there's been in years. Timmy, I feel the same way about your mother. Well, what about Florence? I, I, I wanted to break it off with her, so I took her out to dinner to say goodbye. Well, that's not what it looked like. Well, I know. I, I kept saying goodbye, and she kept saying hello. <laughs> All I'm saying is my mom is real serious about you. Tim, I was married for 42 years. After my wife died, I never thought I'd date again. And then about three months ago, I met two terrific women. I really liked the both of them. I guess I went a little overboard. You gotta figure out who you're saying hello to and who you're saying goodbye to. You guys, we're on in three seconds. Are you two finished, or should I do it by myself? You do it by yourself, we're all finished. Come on. <laughs> well, we're back with Mr. Leonard, who's now gonna choose between a ball peen hammer and a bumping hammer, remembering how close he is to the son of the ball peen. What do you think he's saying to her down there? I don't know. Was he gonna stop seeing that other woman? I don't know. Is he gonna make more of a commitment to your mother? I don't know. How is it possible for you to have a conversation with this man and know nothing? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> That's the difference between you and me. I don't find it necessary to pry in every detail of other people's lives. Well, neither do I. God, I wish we'd put that intercom switch on downstairs. I did. Just turn the volume up. You know, I, uh, I've been thinking a lot about our relationship. I have, too. Oh, okay. So you want to go steady? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Does that mean you won't be seeing that other woman? Oh, boy, I wasn't that obvious, was I? No. <laughs> it was Tim and Jill. They were acting so idiotic last night, I knew something was up. 
Well, that is all over. I've also given a great deal of thought about my priorities in life, and you're right at the top, right after my arthritis pills. <laughs> you're at the top of my list, too, after my bunion pads. <laughs> Boy, are we going to be a lovely pair walking hand in hand into the pharmacy. <laughs> So, where do we go from here? I don't know, but at our age, we better go fast. <laughs> Art. <laughs> You're prettier than a blushing apricot in a little wicker basket. <laughs> I love it when you talk fruit to me. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? He sure knows his produce. <laughs> what do you think they're doing now? Pretty quiet. Hey, Mr. Leonard! <laughs> the food here is actually quite good. Yeah, it was nice. We finally got to enjoy the food. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. May I interest you in some dessert? Ooh, we'd love dessert. We have a delicious creme brulee. Mm. I don't believe this guy. All right, it's a little bland. <laughs> But the chocolate mousse is excellent. You can't believe a word the man says. All right, the lemon tart. I swear by it. Here. Oh, hello, Timmy. What the heck's going on here? You got a lot of nerve. Yeah, careful, Tim. She's half your age, buddy. You got to be ashamed of yourself. Tim, I'd like you to meet my daughter. <laughs> well, of course it's your daughter. She's half your age. <laughs> <laughs> cool, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm just going to slip back to my table and finish my other foot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. But stupid. 